Mr. Vivek K. Serene, Interim Secretary of the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development. Welcome. Mr. Jeff Liu, President and CEO of Fuya Group North America. And let's welcome our moderator, Mr. Ji Tao, President and Editor-in-Chief of China Daily USA. OK, nice meeting everyone here. It's a quite, uh, I mean, solid afternoon. We have a lot of uh, interesting discussion. And, um, and uh, yes, I feel golf is too excited. <laughs> <laughs> But definitely, I believe uh, you would all agree with me. I mean, we have a very solid afternoon. We have a lot of discussion. And uh, these speakers, expert speakers, shared with us a lot of insights into the current situation between US and China relations, and also looking back and looking forward. But now, let's take a look into some of the specifics. I mean, Chinese investment in the United States has long been, I mean, uh, has recently been a very topic. I mean. Uh, I would like to ask the first question, actually, to our friend to, from Kentucky. You came all the way from Kentucky today, and uh, for a moment, we worry about whether the traffic would delay you, whether the flight would delay. <laughs> but fortunately, we have you on time. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Vivek. Okay. And uh, I would like to ask the first question. I mean, just as our uh, host, the young student from Harvard University, Max, mentioned just a while ago, saying that he's from that part of uh, the US where the manufacturing uh, industry has been slowing down. But somehow, some foreign investment has been pouring I mean, money, resources into that region. What is the situation in Kentucky? Can you share with us? Well, thank you. Uh, ni hao. Um, it is a real pleasure to be here today. and. Um, the situation in Kentucky, uh, in the heartland of America, I would communicate to everybody, is one of great, great encouragement. Um, and my message uh, to the relationship and all of those uh, involved in the US-China situation it is one of great encouragement. In Kentucky, in three and a half years under our governor, we have now set a record of new investment uh, exceeding $21 billion in three and a half years. And I was uh, just looking at my uh, WeChat account before I came up here. <laughs> and because we're now friends on WeChat. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Number 241. But I, I, in November, uh, less than a year ago, I never had a WeChat account. And with Governor Bevan, we went to uh, China for the very first time uh, in November. And in six days, we had over 28 meetings in four different cities. And we hustled. And uh, we hustled primarily because business is a contact sport. And you have to get out from behind your desk. You have to press skin. You have to build relationships. And I would present to everybody that at the state level, in the heartland of America, there is a great message of encouragement because from that uh, mission trip we took in November, uh, and I would be happy to elaborate on it more, we now have well over $200 million of new investment coming from China in the Bluegrass State, in the state of Kentucky. That's wonderful. That's very wonderful to use. We're yeah, very, very encouraging. Yeah. Speaking of the manufacturing industry, I think nobody else in this on this stage would speak better. I mean, would be a better representative uh, than uh, Mr. Liu, Ms. Jeff, okay. Jeff Liu. Jeff Liu is the uh, CEO and president of uh, Fuyao uh, North America. And recently, I think I have to congratulate on your new role. You have been a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> Can you share with us uh, what is the feeling of being a new celebrity? <laughs> no, if you back to uh, 20 years ago, I think I'll be happy. <laughs> but uh, you know, as an automotive uh, veteran, uh, our business is very tough. You know, I always talk about automotive is a survival game. To be honest, uh, this is not easy to handle all the kind of the customer requirements, especially, uh, you know, we talk about the global, you know, the economy, and typically about automotive. 
it's a glo it's global products. When we roll out a new, new vehicle, pretty much, you know, you're gonna sell in China, India, and the Europe, and also North America. So this is a no boundary. It doesn't matter which country you go, we have a golden rule called the best place to buy and best place to make. So that's the reason, you know, Fuya as a global company. So we have to follow the customer demand. You know, we're here for JIT. We call it just in time delivery. You know, there's no time for shipping. And occasionally there's some, you know, strike on the West Coast. You know, there's a problem for your glass come over overseas. So we have to make sure our glass to be on the assembly plant on time. There's no time to shut the line down. So that's our goal. And uh, talk about the movie, you know, really that's going to show the culture, you know, conflict and the people. So I like the slogan to say, you know, coming together, that is uh, what do you call the, um, uh, the beginning, okay? So staying together, that's a progress. When you work together, that's a success. You know, also like the slogan said, teamwork to turn to dream work. Doesn't matter which country, what's background gonna be, you got to make the great products, great glass for the automotive, for the suppliers, I mean, for the, for the customer. That's our mission. Yeah. Okay. From the movie, from the documentary, American Fac Factory, which, is, uh, which was recently released, and also the f uh, documentary was backed by the uh, President Obama's distribution uh, foundation, I think, uh, a lot of people uh, have learned uh, how a Chinese company in the U.S. has been working so hard to fulfill the uh, gate, fulfill the goal of the company, and also fulfill the uh, demands of of the customers. That's very impressive. And I remember in one uh, one uh, part of the film, and uh, 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 Mr. Liu talked about uh, how to uh, tell the uh, Chinese uh, colleagues how to. Uh, get together or deal with their American colleagues, how to pay attention to some of the details they have to, uh, because this is, a, I mean, a different culture. You have to be sensitive to the new culture so that you right. can bring together the team. That's a very good practice. And also, um, the other thing I, meant, I noticed is that the many workers, I mean, who joined Fu Yao, I mean, they found this job and they are very happy to ha have this job because they were laid off because of the close down of the, uh, of the GM uh, many years ago. Uh, and now they found these new jobs in Fuyao. They are very, very, uh, I mean, happy and feel very lucky. But also, I noticed that the, most of the uh, workers on the floor are actually uh, in their 50s, 60s, even older. I mean. To Mr. Liu, do you think lack of workforce in manufacturing or the willingness to work in manufacturing industry is a problem for the aim of this country to bring back manufacturing? Uh, will that be a problem? Well, that is uh, uh, the challenge for not only for um, the automotive, you know, any manufacturing job. So currently, I believe in U.S. We call it the industrialized for 40 years, okay? And right now, even we want to say, we're gonna bring the manufacturing job back. But look our young generation, you know? You know, I believe you gotta have a teenager or go to a new college. And I'll give you a perfect example, okay? When you go to the Wall Street, you go to a consulting firm, you work for Google or Facebook, you know, probably I talk about the, the numbers, you know? The first offer maybe start from six figures, $100,000 plus same bonus. When you go back to manufacturing job, let's say you go to General Motors, you know, as an engineer, starting maybe $60,000 only. So there's a difference because traditional manufacturing job and compare with 40 years ago and today, they're totally different. So it's really hard to find the young, talented people go back to the traditional work. It's kind of boring, but I tell you, as an automotive veteran, I learn a lot from automotive because take the vehicle, there are 20,000 different components, and there's now a lot of new technology. You go to Las Vegas for the SEMA show, okay, you go to the CES show, a lot of new technology can be actually first user with automotive. So we work with Job Ohio, and also we develop a program called what is the new manufacturer going to, look, going to be? That's why you're gonna see the movie, automation, you know, ergonomics, 
So people and machine, how they work together, make sure you're gonna follow the industry 4.0, which is the German standard, and you can actually create more challenge job, not only for the load glass and unload glass, you're gonna have something new technology. That's why we encourage people, you know what? Learn more technology, you're gonna control the robotics, so you can make more fun for you to do the traditional manufacturing job. That's the reason we have to learn and offer more trainings, and also start from young age. Manufacturing is really not a traditional manufacturing anymore. So you got to learn the new technology can be applied. We call the industrial point zero. So this is the only way you can actually be survived for the motive. It's more fun, actually. Yeah, I totally agree. I would like to uh, ask uh, Mr. Shell. I mean, you are also representing CGCC Chinese Investments in the U.S. And uh, I know the uh, organization has been serving uh, the members, your member uh, companies. So what is the sentiment among your member companies about, I mean, uh, future, I mean, prospects of investing in this country? Yeah, uh, if you, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's a very good summit. Um, uh, if you saw the report uh, uh, published by CGCC in for year of 2019 uh, for the investment to United States from China, that basically the uh, job of the investment had been 90%. It's dramatic. And I think I, I talked to many people, uh, business, business partners over here and the um, investor from China. So I think we mentioned uh, some of the point over there is the uncertainty uh, being detected. So the business cooperation is basically about the trust, about the trust is the foundation, the how you're looking forward to work with our partner. And when you have the uncertainty uh, to see looking forward and not sure whether or not you can really get it out through, you will definitely will shrink back from your uh, initiation. So that's a uh, that big concern so far we've we'll, we'll been seeing. Uh, even though I do see a lot of people still uh, in have confidence in working together, it's very good examples left it, uh, two examples as states of the factor. Uh, while that's also the part of the reason we believe in the investment will build a win-win situation, that's why ICBC, uh, our bank, is in the first of the place support for you all in their their factory from the establishment. So, and that we believe in the success of the cooperation. Yeah, and also, I mean, recently some people are talking about, I mean, the possibility of, uh, I mean, removing the supply chain or moving the supply chain to, uh, uh, I mean, other, other parts of the world uh, from China. I would like to ask Ms. Zhao, I know you have, uh, I mean, uh, down research into the topic. I would like to ask your take on that perspective. Uh, I actually uh, just covered a little bit uh, about the modern manufacturing. I think that's, um, this is a good question. Uh, the first of all, we, we should believe in the market force. So the market is not, re this uh, automatically in the future uh, is market driven uh, factors out there. What is second is, the modern manufacturing has been so different than, uh, than it has been for in 40 years or 10 years ago. And China is very unique in the new uh, center of the supply chain because of the background, uh, well, the high efficient government uh, support, the uh, human capital. Uh, if you take example like the IPO uh, assembly line in China, it requires about 7,000 engineers. And over uh, like uh, uh, 40 or 50,000 uh, skillful worker in the whole uh, uh, assembly line over there is, is remarkable and it's pretty unique. You hardly can find uh, anywhere else in the world. But moving forward, there's also some, uh, we call it low end or simple assembling or manufacturing job is switched from China to uh, like a Vietnam or other countries as well. Uh, it's very nature, what we thought in past of years, um, uh, switched from like Japan or Korea to China. So I think it's, it's kind of like a redesign of the manufacturing and redesign of the supply chain. Uh, right now supply chain in the world 
Uh, I don't see, well, uh, I do not have the uh, concern that whether or not China can suffer from a big switch of the supply chain, like it is designed the way. And I still believe in the uh, competitive advantage of China to be uh, uh, the one of the uh, manufacturing, but we do see the signs that right now this advantage uh, from the location, like we knew the infrastructure of China is very good, and the connection with the uh, Southeast Asia and the whole Asian area, we see Chinese, uh, Chinese manufacturing is expanding <coughs> from China, became part of the model like a core in China and expand to the Asian area. So I think it would be the trend uh, for the Asia. Thank you, Mr. Xiao. I would like to ask Vivek, I mean, you mentioned, I mean, uh, things between uh, Kentucky and China are going very smoothly and successfully. Uh, but, uh, and also in May, I know uh, your state hosts uh, the fifth US-China government uh, uh, forum, and a lot of uh, Chinese uh, uh, provinces, enterprises are coming to your state. So from this meeting, what kind of message you get from, I mean, attendants from China and also from states? And also, do you feel that, I mean, the current trade tension between the two countries will affect the future prospects of investing, I mean, Chinese companies investing in your state? Yeah, you know, there's no doubt that what's going on at the national level between our two countries will, will have an impact. But our view in Kentucky is more of a long-term view. Um, you know, first and foremost, it's just mission critical that we build great relationships. The, the more that people have strong relationships together, the more they're just gonna be friendly, the more they're gonna love on each other, the more they're gonna be helpful to each other. And in the world of capital, capital goes where capital is welcomed. So, you know, while at a national level, the message may be out there that America's not open for business. I assure you, anyone in this room who wants to come to Kentucky next week, <laughs> you will find a very welcomed reception because we're, we're welcoming our friends from China as well as other countries, but we want to do more business. And so when the governor and I were in China in November, we caught wind of this Gov U.S. Governor's China Forum. It had been taking place since 2011. And, you know, it was, uh, it was productive, but we raised our hand and we asked, could we host this event in Kentucky? And so we were granted the opportunity in May to host this Governor's Forum. And what we did was rather creative. The whole thing sold out. We had, a, many of you, some of you in this own room were, were there. And um, one of the things that we did that was rather creative is that while we brought in governors from China and governors from the United States to meet, and quite frankly, while the politicians met in one room, we created a parallel track. If any of you here in the States have seen the, uh, the, the show Shark Tank, we came up with our own version of Shark Tank where while the politicians were meeting, we, we figured out what would it look like if we welcomed capital to Kentucky, investors, Chinese investors, American investors, and then we also did what we do very well as business people. We identified projects that could be simultane simultaneously presented. It was at that event that an investor from China was introduced for the first time to an entity in Western Kentucky that resulted in an, an over $200 million deal, and that's just phase one. We're very optimistic that we're gonna see another phase continue. And so, you know, th the main thing that we have been doing is just building relationships. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this also to help, because uh, I think these comments were made earlier. It's very important. On the first day of the Chinese New Year, February the 15th, we, we threw open the doors of the governor's mansion First time this has ever been done. To our knowledge, it was done in Kentucky. I don't know about elsewhere. And we invited 180 students, Chinese students studying in America, to come to the mansion. We had Chinese uh, performing artists. We served Chinese food. 
We flew the Chinese flag, the American flag, the Kentucky flag, and we just had a wonderful cultural event. And at the end of that, we had 180 students and it gave us the opportunity to say to the, to the next generation for the very first time, be encouraged, you're welcome here. And um, out of that has come a lot of great things that give us great excitement. That's, uh, yeah, that's uh, very, I mean, exciting to learn about. I mean, you're creating a very inf investment-friendly environment for all these investors. So I believe in the future, definitely more companies might be interested. Maybe you should talk Before to Before you Jeff know it, everyone in Ohio <laughs> is going to start kind of coming south. <laughs> no, one come I know, the China, we have a multi, okay? <laughs> so Kentucky, they have a great whiskey, uh, all yeah. right? That's yeah. right. Sure. That's good okay. ground water. Yes, bourbon. yes. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I would like to ask, I mean, since Fuyao, uh, from the documentary I learned, and also from the reports, learned that since Ms. Liu joined Fuyao, actually, the company started to uh, 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 profit, I mean, yeah. getting good um, business. So, do you think um, in the future you might expand to other parts of the U.S. if everything goes right? Well, as a fact, we already did. You know, we just bought a new actually place in uh, South Carolina because uh, the BMW was there. Mm -hmm. Actually, we supply the BMW the glass. You know, we win the BMW X Series. You know, if you talk about the Fuyao, you know, thanks Chairman's the big vision. You know, he actually can see something far behind. You know, for the automotive industry. So that's why you know when we signed up the joint, I mean the strategic alliances with General Motors, that was back to 20, uh, 2010. So 2016, that decision, we got to have a manufacturing inside the USA to supply the glass for General Motors. And at the same time, we talk about that, we heard about the, all the speakers talk about the trust. Really, you know, that we're partners, you know, probably as you're perfect, you know, when you back to home, when you fact your wife, your husband, you know, it's a partner, so you're never going to win, okay? Nobody's going to win for that. But we actually try to encourage people, we need to work together because Automotive is a non-stop production line. So any people play different role, you gotta work as a team to make that happen. So this is the reason why we actually, we, we encourage the people, you know what? We don't care about your background, what your color gonna be, because we actually serve for the OEM, because we gotta deliver our good quality parts to the, to the customer. And uh, earn the trust, you know, we go through the communication, really build the good relationships right now, after the film was stopped, actually, after two years, we have the great culture established at FUYAO because when Chairman hired me, you know, the first day, hey, Jeff, you know what? You got to treat your employee like your family member, okay? That's my vision. My mission, we have to build a great culture, build a passion. You know, we got to work as a passion people and the develop, develop, deliver the good products for the OEMs. This is the reason why customers like us. Every single year, we gain our sales revenue by 30% every year, and we double our profit every year right now. But cannot be doubled next year, but we're gonna try to be there. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Congratulations, in advance. And also, Mr. Xiao, uh, I mean, uh, ICBC is a heavyweight in finance industry, and also, I mean, world top 500. So I would like to ask how this current, I mean, trade tension affecting your industry and uh, especially your own, I mean, performance in the U.S. or your business in the U.S. Right. Uh, this is the question that I've been asked a lot, a lot from, um, from everywhere. And we do, uh, uh, for uh, ICBC U.S. performance that we, that were, were, were the majority of the clients were the uh, U.S. Fortune 500, so we do not directly uh, impacted by the trade uh, debate, uh, but we do have some clients. So I would like to see, we seeing the current credit market has been uh, suffered from this type of the uh, uh, trade conflicts, and especially in the certain areas uh, for our clients, like in the retail market, uh, like in the uh, Manufacturing uh, business, they've been uh, impacted uh, a lot by the tariffs being imposed into the uh, trade. And I do see, uh, looking at the future, um, uh, it may expand uh, from the 
real economic level to the further uh, virtual economic, uh, economic level, what I mean is services industry, uh, banking, or consulting. Uh, so this is the first place of the impact that we're seeing. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, I, I am a strong believer of the market economic, and I think the market will always find a way out. Uh, so I do have the confidence that uh, uh, it could be a whole new world or a new stage to some of our clients. Uh, thinking even a workout several years later, you may not really be part of the player. So that's, uh, I, I think, is um, a problem over here in the United States. And uh, if some investment shook it out from the current investment that will further integrity, the uh, impact, the, the business about, uh, scale as well. Okay, yeah. But also, I mean, we know that a new round of trade talk is going to happen immediately after October, I mean, early next month. So what is your, I mean, expectation or what is your hope for that trade talk? Well, again, uh, uh, again, uh, I'm a strong believer in, in the cooperation. Uh, for what I'm seeing, uh, you know, today uh, I think it was tremendous uh, forum that we're looking uh, back to the 40 years and looking forward. So if you look back at 40 years, you will find it's, it's one, the Sino-US relationship is one of the greatest relationship ever happened in the world. So why do people even want to run in it? Why do people want, want, want to, uh, you know, stop it? So uh, I do believe uh, uh, any way you lead to the way for the successful uh, conversation, but it may have some obstacles currently uh, that I believe, uh, like we mentioned, our leaders should have the uh, wisdom to serve it. Okay, thank you. I think, I mean, uh, with, uh, because of the time, we couldn't take uh, any question from the audience, but I think we've got a lot of, uh, I mean, ideas from these, uh, three uh, gentlemen and also thanks Mr. Xiao and Mr. Vivek and also Mr. Liu. And I believe, I mean, uh, just um, uh, as Mr. Xiao mentioned, I mean, the U.S.-China relations has been wonderful over the last 40 years and there's no reason that we should change this good relationship into something that is detrimental to the development or to the benefits of the two people. So that's hope after today's session we have more ideas for how the two sides can work together and especially we have, I mean, the previous speakers have shared their insights into this topic. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.